Hi, everybody. Welcome to Unit 3.3 Conventions. Um, things are moving along towards your rough draft. Um, at the end of this unit, you'll be submitting your rough draft and working your way toward the final draft of your research paper. Um, so hopefully you've begun the research process and you've begun gathering information. Um, hopefully you've been looking at maybe some of the additional resources in the um, writing your research paper document. Um, which hopefully will help you determine not only where to look for sources, but also what type of sources you're looking for. So at this point, you should be assembling some evidence, hopefully, to incorporate into that rough draft. And as you're assembling that evidence, you've probably found out that there's a few different ways that information can appear in your paper. In your analysis, you were required to choose quotes that were useful from your articles. However, um, in a research style essay, no more than about 25 to 33% of the information can be cited that means attributed to another author, and only a very small portion of that information, maybe 5%, should actually be quoted. So now it's time to talk about how we deal with other information when you integrate it into your paper. Um, students are pretty familiar usually with the terms summary and paraphrase. However, um, summary, most people have an idea of how to summarize. Paraphrasing is the one that a lot of people struggle to do well. When you're writing any kind of research-based paper, there's five types of information that can appear in there. There's your words, of course, your explanations, your information. Um, you'll be analyzing your evidence. You'll be explaining its importance to your reader and how it supports your thesis statement. There's also common knowledge, which we'll talk about um, a couple conventions tips from now, how we deal with common knowledge. So don't worry about that for now. You know that you can quote information, place it in quotes and place a citation after it. We can also summarize information. So a summary is basically a short overview of somebody else's work. Oh, I love it when that happens. There we go. Okay. It's a short overview of somebody else's work. So I can poorly summarize the Lord of the Rings by saying that a short little dude has to take a piece of jewelry um, up to a volcano and chuck it in to save the world. And a lot of people are trying to stop him. That's not a good summary, but it is a summary. Okay. We take, we read in this case, the larger work and we provide the overall gist of that work to a reader or a listener. You do this all the time when you're talking about shows or movies with your friends. They're like, hey, what was the movie about? And you're like, oh, a guy goes here and does this and he's trying not to get it stolen from him by other guys. I don't know. Okay. Um, in the realm of a research paper then, Sometimes summary is incredibly useful. For instance, maybe I don't want a lot of information from this particular study, but I do want to summarize the findings of this study for my reader. So instead of going through and explaining the whole study process and giving the exact statistics of what they learned and etc., I'm going to go ahead and say that um, these individuals um, studied 1,607 hospital workers in Vietnam um, who wore medical masks or cloth masks or some mix of both and found that those who wore cloth masks had a higher chance of being infected with a respiratory illness than those who did not. Okay, that's my summary of this entire article. I could go a little bit more into depth and talk about maybe how frequently they wash their masks. Um, and I could maybe speculate a little bit on why that happened, but really the speculation on why it happened is going to occur in the analysis piece. And when I say speculate, I'm not saying speculate without evidence, but I will look at my other research and find reasons why those individuals experienced a higher rate of respiratory infections than folks who wore a different type of masks or a mix of cloth and medical masks. Okay, so I can distill this into maybe two or three sentences. I'm going to provide a citation for that um, and I'm going to present that information to my reader. Most students can summarize things. What students have trouble with traditionally 
is paraphrasing. I say, what is paraphrase? And they say, oh, presenting somebody else's information in your own words. And what we tend to mean by that is we take somebody else's words, we get out a thesaurus, right? A book of synonyms. We change a couple of words. We take half a sentence and we move it over here. We take this half the sentence and move it over here. And um, maybe we take a couple words out, exchange them with something else. And we're like, there, it's my words. That's not your words. You've dressed up somebody else's words to make them look different, but they're not actually your words. So you as the reader need to understand First of all, what that other author is saying, you need to read that article for its context and then present whatever significant information you find according to your understanding of that information. Okay, so here I'm using the term a critically informed interpretation. This means that you have carefully read not only the sentences that you're interested in, but also the information that surrounds them and used that information in order to explain to your reader what that writer meant. Let's look at an example. Okay, um, clearly this is not something that our reader is going to be familiar with, right? This is a lot of fancy language and it gets even better. I'm going to come down here um, to this paragraph and I'm looking at this information right here. It is critical that the material's edges conform snugly to the face to prevent aerosol from entering gaps between the face and mask. The mask must not enable viral imbibition by the lips, tongue, and saliva. Ideally, the mask does not contact the lips or there is at least one hydrophobic layer of fabric in contact with the face so aerosol trapped from the exterior does not wick through the mask and become transported by the mouth. Wow, this is a lot of technical stuff. Um, and it's not even necessarily that technical, but they're using very fancy language that I need to break down and explain to my reader, okay? So I need to paraphrase this information. So here's my original. Okay, so the question is then, what are they saying? Well, they're looking at how a mask fits around the face. They're looking at um, how it comes into or does not come into contact with the face. And they're looking at why it's important that it doesn't come into contact with the face. Okay, so what these guys are saying um, So they're saying that the edges of the face mask need to touch the face. There can be no air gaps Oh my word, edges of a cloth mask. They also note that mask wearers that masks must not touch the wearer's mouth area so that viruses um, do not enter the individual's mouth and enter uh, okay um, this will make it less likely to be infected or to contract the virus. Okay. You as the writer need to, sorry, this is what happens in the writing process. Always revise and edit your work. You as the writer are responsible for translating what these writers say, okay? So we're not just gonna take this and we're not gonna say um, it is vitally important that the fabric sides meet the wearer's face to prevent air particles from coming into the openings between the face and the fabric sample, okay? That's ineffective paraphrasing. 
that is still literary theft. That's literally what plagiarism means. It means kidnapping. So if you're plagiarizing, you're kidnapping another writer's work, stealing their words and placing them into your own piece of writing and trying to take credit for it. Okay, here's another example. In this essay over here, this is another, or not essay, uh, study over here. This is another pretty technical piece, okay? We're looking at this. The problem of finding an appropriate material for a homemade mask therefore involves a trade-off between breathability and efficiency of blocking virus particles carried by droplets. Hence, we consider efficiency and breathability as the two critical parameters for mask materials. Now, I don't want to bring these little Greek letters into my paper because that's not going to help my reader at all. So what I need to do is translate. Um, the critical piece of building a homemade mask is ensuring that the wearer can breathe easily and that viral particles are unable to or have difficulty unable to pass or have difficulty passing through the fabric. Okay, that's the overall idea. That's what they're getting at. That's how I would paraphrase in this draft anyway. That's how I would paraphrase what they're saying. Okay, so paraphrasing again is not just changing a couple of words and slapping a citation on it. It's understanding what those authors are saying, translating it into words that your reader can understand, and then presenting it along with its importance as much as possible. If it is not possible to translate, to critically interpret that information, just quote it, okay? Most of the time you should be able to paraphrase pretty, not pretty easily necessarily, but paraphrasing or summary should work just fine. Occasionally you will run into a piece of information that just is gonna sound better, read better, and be more powerful coming from the author. Quote that, work on summarizing and paraphrasing the rest, okay? Good luck with your drafts this week.